Hello, everybody. My name is Lucas. This is Lucas Yarns. I don't know why my knuckle just cracked there. Apologize. Uh, how are you doing? <laughs> um, some of you may know me from a video channel that I had many moons ago, um, almost 10 years ago now. The idea of that is terrifying. Uh, some of you don't know me at all. Um, either way, welcome. Again, my name is Lucas. Uh, today is December 2nd, 2023, and it is a cold, gross, rainy morning today. Um, I wanted to wait until I had a better video situation for my debut for this channel. However, I have um, a lunch meeting with a friend, um, and one of the, the almost FOs that I have uh, is a gift for that friend as a housewarming gift. So... Um, I have to get this video done, and I have to, to weave in all the ends that I'm going to show you in a minute, uh, <laughs> and, and get that gift to the friend. So, um, to int intro myself, um, I have been crocheting for uh, about 25 years now, something like that, uh, and knitting for, um, I think, 9 or 10 years. Um <clears throat> Uh, I started crocheting in high school. Uh, I came across randomly um, some amigurumi, and I wanted to make some gifts for my friends. So I knew my aunt crocheted, so I, I came to her one day and I said, will you teach me? Um, and she did. And I, my very first project, which I, I never recommend to people these days, but my very first project was a giant granny square blanket um, just one continuous long granny square. It was massive. Uh, we no longer have that blanket, actually, but that was my first project, and I, I think I was hooked, <laughs> literally, um, from the moment since. So, um, I started knitting, thanks to YouTube. Uh, I came across some videos and some knitting patterns, and I wanted to learn how to do it. So, I picked up some needles and some yarn, um, and I have with me sitting on the table next to me, I keep looking at it, uh, some of the very first things that I knitted uh, so many moons ago. So I thought I'd start and, uh, with that and share um, with you at least these pieces <laughs> because um, it shows, shows how far I've come. Um, so uh, like many, many knitters, I started with a dishcloth, uh, making the grandmother's favorite dishcloth but I didn't, at the time, have any cotton yarn on me. I just had acrylic. Uh, so I made it out of this, like, carrot-colored uh, acrylic yarn. Um, I, I, looking at it now, I'm actually quite impressed that, you know, my tension is relatively even. Um, there are some issues with the yarn overs and the edges, the edge stitches. Uh, but I'm actually quite impressed that this was the first thing that I knitted. <laughs> like, I, I, ha I have to dig it up somewhere, but I have pictures of, of me, like, casting this on and knitting it on Facebook in, in memory somewhere. Um, I'm, I'm really quite impressed with this, so I've, I've kept this all these years, and I, I don't think I'll ever get rid of it, but um, that led to learning how to do the purl stitch. Um, and so I did a little... This is not going to show up well. I did a little um, stockinette piece here um, in the same yarn. I was using the same yarn just to use it up, I guess. Um, again, you know, my, my stitches are relatively consistent. I'm, I'm very pleased to see that it was like that to begin with. Not that that matters, really, but um, I just happened to notice that while I, while I was looking at it. I'm still not a fan of the pearl stitch, can't stand it, but that's beside the point. So then that led me to another um, dishcloth, washcloth, whatever, and this pattern was found Ravelry. I don't remember the name of it, but it's just a, a dishcloth with a border and a stockinette center, and it is not blocked at all, so it's like curling and all kinds of things, but there's a little like four stitch border or four row bar on the bottom and four stitch on the sides and then stocking it in the middle here 
Um, I should redo this pattern in actual cotton and see what happens now. My cast on is so tight. <laughs> um, yeah, I have that as well. I have a dishcloth that was recommended at some point during a video from uh, Ross at Smells Like Yarn. Um, he was knitting this pattern one day and I picked it up and I was like, I want to challenge myself and see what happens. I don't remember the pattern, um, but here it is. It's another dishcloth. There's some, some lace features in the middle for the increases and decreases. My cast on edge is ridiculously tight. I, I can't even imagine how <laughs> I got that in there. Um, but yeah, it's 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 an interesting uh, an interesting piece there. Uh, no idea what the pattern is, but this was like my next attempt at knitting. Um, not terrible, not terrible. Then I made a hat. And I don't think I've ever worn this hat. I don't think anybody has ever worn this hat. But I wanted to knit something in the round. I used circular needles. I used DPNs for the first time in this project. Um, this is made out of Red Heart's um, Blacklight, I think it was. Red Heart Super Saver Blacklight. There's a little, um, um, like a two by two rib here on the bottom. And then there's the, the the body of the hat. The decreases I did not do a good job with. The um, finishing the hat and the crown I did not do a good job with either. It's it has issues. <laughs> it has some issues, uh, but I'm proud of it because it was the first one that I did. The first one that I did. There's a random. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a random. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I have no clue what that is. Um, but I'm super proud of it. Oh, I see. That's where I sewed my end in. Wasn't paying attention, and now it's, it, it went all the way. Okay, sure, whatever. Uh, I love this yarn, but this hat has never been worn. I, I, I can almost guarantee you it's never been worn. Um, it's not something that I personally would actually wear out in public, but I love this yarn. I love making things with it. Um, and now I, I, I don't even think they make this yarn anymore, but <laughs> who knows? Um, so th those are my first knitting pieces here. Uh, I've kept them all these years in a Ziploc bag and I will keep them forever because I wish I had my first crochet project, that big blanket. I wish we still had that, but we just don't. Um, so let's talk about uh, recently finished items. Um, I apologize that this video seems a little weird. I will develop a cadence as I get back into the swing of things. My recording situation is going to change as well. Um, but I, I kind of have a, a need to get the video out today. So, <laughs> um, so my, my friend is moving into a new apartment and I like to give a little, uh, housewarming gift at, if I can, and the house for me gift is always going to be um, a set of coasters, uh, matching um, dishcloths and washcloths um, in a color palette that matches what I know the person's apartment to be. If I don't know, then it's going to be just a random assortment. But the friend of mine told me a couple of things that he would like in his apartment, so that is what I've gone with here. So first off, I let's just do the coasters. Um, this is just a four round circle with um, an H hook, I think it was, uh, in some gray cotton yarn. I forget the actual color now. Is that the, no, that's the other one. Um, and then I have this uh, in, this is um, Peaches and Cream in, in Renegade. It looks like camo, and that's what what uh, what he initially asked me for. So I have two of these and two of the gray ones with all the ends to weave in. Well, weaving in ends is my least favorite part of the entire process. 
That's why I wait till the last possible minute to do it. <laughs> uh, I also have what I call my scrubby cloths. This is, let's move that out of the way. In the Renegade and in the gray. It's a little easier to see what's going on here in the gray. But this is done with a G-hook, I believe. Details will be in the description below because I will write out the entire pattern for this one. Um, it's super, super easy. This is chain 29 in a hook of your choice with cotton of your choice, uh, single crochet, and then in every row, single crochet in the back loop to create a ridge. Um, see if I can show that here. It's a, uh, not really, uh, but each of the, um, the loops that you don't crochet into create a ridge. So this whole cloth is, is, is textured and I do that until I have 12 ridges. I'll show you here. This is my tail from my original chain. I count 12 ridges all going all the way up. And once I hit 12, the cloth is done. So that's probably 24 rows. Um, if I do my math correctly, because <laughs> each ridge is two rows. Um, so 24 rows, uh, chain 30, single crochet each across, and then every row after that is in the back loop single crochet. Um, I love these cloths because the ridges give it a lot of extra scrubbing power. Um, and it's one of, one of my favorite things to make, honestly. Uh, I do every year a giant box of them for Christmas and let the family and the friends pick and choose what they want from that. So we have four of these for the friend. Those will go to him today. Then I was browsing Ravelry and I found another pattern that I thought I would try because why not? And it's called the uh, Spread the Dishcloth Joy pattern by Katherine Richardson. I just looked it up on Ravelry. Um, it is another textured cloth here. Uh, it's a free pattern, but it uses uh, single and double crochet stitches to create a pattern in the cloth itself. So it is, it is textured, but not quite as thick or bulky as the ridges from the uh, single crochet in the back loop. Um, not sure how I feel about this one yet, but uh, it was interesting enough to make. The pattern itself calls for a square cloth, so it, it needed maybe about 10 or 12 more rows than what I did, and then a border around it. I didn't do the border because I think these look fine without it. Um, I stopped the rows when it matched in size the ridge cloths, so I'll put them side by side. Um, you can kind of see that there. I, I matched the width of the, the cloth so that they were similar in size. Um, this is not a bad pattern. It is a yarn hog though, so I was glad that I got extra yarn out of it. But I did two of these in the camo, or the renegade, and then two of these in the gray. You can see the texture a little bit better in the gray. That, that looks pretty good. Um, so... These are all going to be woven uh, as soon as I finish this video and um, packaged up and ready to give to that friend because I have to meet for lunch in a couple of hours. Uh, <laughs> um, so what am I working on right now? Right now I'm, I'm going through a big um, like winter cleanup um, in my living space. Uh, some years ago, we combined three houses into one, um, so space is at a, a premium here. I don't have a big large yarn collection. I don't have a lot of space for these things, so I've been going through a lot of my stuff, um, cleaning it out, making room for some things, getting rid of some other things that I don't use anymore. Um, and so right now, I'm sort of in limbo in, with projects, but I do have some whips, and I have... Uh, a discovery in my yarn cave <laughs> that I had no idea was there. Um, so let's do my whips first and then we'll talk about future projects. So right now I am working on a very basic um, 
garter stitch scarf. I love making basic garter stitch scarves. Um, mindless knitting is my, my go-to when it comes to knitting. Uh, it is in a bag, a project bag that is from a shop that I don't think is, is, is making bags anymore, sewn by Lindsay. Um, this was just a, a, a bag that I purchased many, many, many moons ago. I love it. Little bottle caps everywhere. Um, this scarf is in Karen Cotton Lava Cakes in the color uh, Apricot Sorbet. So this is the yarn. You'll see there, there's there's a cream and then there's the, the apricot sorbet in the middle. Uh, I am literally just doing a gutter stitch scarf with this. Um, not really liking this yarn a whole lot, but it has a lot of really good drape to it. And I know that the recipients of this scarf will enjoy it. Um, and I live in the South, so we don't, we don't get a lot of really harsh winters, uh, but it, with it being a lighter fabric um, with the cotton uh, in the cotton cake here it will be something that can get a lot of use uh, from the recipient so uh, that is a long-term project I don't really have a, a deadline or goal to finish it it's just you know mindless knitting when I'm watching TV or, or, or listening to an audiobook because that's one of my favorite things to do <laughs> um, did you know that Spotify premium includes audiobooks now if you didn't go look there's a ton of them in there um, and I love it. Um, I have a Ravelry project page for this scarf, so you can check all of the details there if you'd like. I will link it in the description below. Um, it'll get finished whenever it gets finished. I'm, I'm not really super concerned about it, uh, but I always have a scarf on the noodles. Um, a simple garter stitch scarf. I, I love making them. They make great gifts, and it's just easy mindless knitting. So uh, that is that. My next project is a Christmas gift that I have to get done at some point before Christmas, um, whenever I have time for it. And this is in a uh, reusable shopping bag that I got off of Amazon. Super fancy, I know. I apologize for the noise. This is a basic granny square blanket, but... It is in a yarn that I am really struggling with. Um, this is Karen Latte Cakes. It's a super fuzzy, fuzzy yarn. This is what I have left of the first ball. Uh, I have three of them uh, to make the main portion of this blanket, and then I'm going to do a border, probably a single crochet border and a white to go against this. It is shaping up to be a pretty decent size so far and if you look at the striping of that yarn as I peek over to look at the camera uh, you can see the different color variations in the striping here it starts with a with a peachy color in the middle and it goes to a darker uh, khaki and a lighter khaki beige whatever you want to call that color and it goes back to the peach um, this is being done on an H hook it is just a basic granny square uh, this will be a throw blanket um, for my mother. Um, she has got some health issues going on right now, and uh, a throw blanket would be very helpful to her. Plus, I know that she loves the colors, and I know that she will love this yarn. <laughs> but for me, I am really struggling with this yarn. It is tough to see stitches. It is tough to see where to put your hook. Um... I'm really not loving it. It is super soft. It is amazingly soft. Uh, and it's going to make a fantastic blanket. Um, but I'm really struggling with this. And I have two whole other takes to go <laughs> of this yarn. <laughs> so we'll see what I end up with. I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll see. I, I'm i really struggling to get through this, though. It is, it is pretty tough. Um which is part of the reason why I haven't touched it in like a week. Uh, but I need to get back to that probably this afternoon. <clears throat> I'd like to finish out this cake today if I can. We'll see how that goes. Um, 
not really sure how fast I'll be able to finish that, but I do have to have it done by Christmas. So. <laughs> we will see how that goes. Let me put that down there. <clears throat> so those are my only whips right now. I'm going to start something else later this afternoon because I found some yarn in my storage closet that is now going to be an actual working closet. Um, I found some yarn I didn't know I had, um, and I'm quite excited because I can't find this locally anywhere anymore. <laughs> um, it is Red Heart Super Saver in the Neon Stripes. I have three cakes of it. I have caked up two of them because these were running loose in a project bag. Uh, no label, nothing. Uh, so I caked them up yesterday. Uh, I'm going to start a shawl with this or a shawlette or something. Um, I'm going to use like a 9 or 10 uh, US 9 or 10 needle um, depending on what I have in my stash. It's probably going to be a 9. We'll see. And I'm thinking of making uh, just a simple like garter stitch shawl to show off the yarn a little bit. I'm going to browse some patterns. Um, I have three skeins of it. It won't make a huge shawl, but it'll make something that I can at least put around my neck. <laughs> I don't want to crochet with this because the, the stripes are not very long, so I'll get like three or four like double crochets out of each color and it would go back to black and I, I want to really show off the stripes of the yarn uh, so I think knitting is the way that I'm gonna go with that we'll see we'll see uh, I'm gonna browse Ravelry later and find a pattern for it so <clears throat> that is what's coming in the next couple of days um, yeah, so I think I'm going to end it there. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope to have videos out once a week, maybe twice a week. We'll see. Uh, depending on my progress for projects and what's going on. Um, or I might just come over and chat while I knit. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, but until next time, my friends, you can catch all of my information in the description below. Uh, I will link the pattern pages or the project pages for my current whips as well as any patterns that I have mentioned uh, in the description. And uh, if you'd like, leave a comment. We'll have a chat in the, in the comments. Um, and until next time, I will see you. Have a good one.